Afadei. So today, at the request of a couple of people, I'm going to show you how to do some things with the paper products, I guess you could say. Uh, mainly these are things that you can do in your home or if you're at a restaurant or something, or if you're having a party or whatnot. So, um, I'll be dealing with uh, napkins today. Uh, so one of my buddies said uh, had asked me to show them how to do a couple things because I've done them in the past at parties or whatnot when I have friends over. Um, the first one I'm going to show you is how to make a spiraled uh, pile of napkins. I've seen them at parties. Uh, it works best with square napkins, but you can use the regular like odd shaped rectangular napkins you have at your home usually. Anyways, it's really easy to do. Uh, what you do is you take a pile of napkins. Don't worry, my table's clean. Uh, lay them flat on the table and then on one of the corners, uh, just place your finger there so the whole napkin pile doesn't, uh, stack of napkins doesn't spin. Then take a flat object, usually a bottle or a glass, make sure it's empty. And then place it on top as such. And then just spin it either clockwise or counterclockwise, it doesn't matter. Uh, but just remember which way you do it. Then spin it several times. The napkins won't spin perfectly and there'll be a little resistance because the napkins are folded. So just pick up your cup every so often maybe and spin some more. And then what I like to do is after I'm done, flip it and then spin the glass in the same direction that I was spinning earlier. And then you'll spin both sides. And there you go. There's your spiral napkins. Yeah, it's pretty simple. It's just a little trick. Plus it makes them easier to pick up, they say. I'll put these back in my napkin holder. The next thing I'm gonna show you how to make is a paper rose out of a napkin. I learned this from a gentleman from Guam. As a weaver myself, I'm always interested in learning how to make new things. They're made by hand, and then um, basically anything that transforms a flat piece of paper or material into a three three dimensional object. So this is a rose that I'm going to show you how to make. You don't need the glass, so I'll put this over here. Uh, basically, how you make this flower or rose is you take a napkin. Plain old napkin. Let's push this guy out to the side. And then you just basically open your napkin like so. Find the openings. Ta da! And then find uh, one of the sides. Usually I like to work with the shorter side. That way the rose is as long as it possibly can be. And then just roll that edge away from you two to three times. And then don't crease it flat, but just crease it a little so that it, it maintains its shape, but it's not flat. Now what you're going to do is put the folded side to your left, yeah, your left. And then you're going to start on the edge closest to you and you're going to p roll it fairly tight in the beginning but don't try not to crease it don't flatten it and then as you continue on don't worry about this side so much but focus on this area right before the the last crease right here or last fold I should say and then pinch that as you're rolling it but Progressively roll the which will the part that will turn into the um, rosebud or flower petals larger. And don't worry about this so much. You'll get to that in a second. And then about an inch before you're finished, fold back about, I don't know, half inch or about an inch. And then continue rolling forward. So there's your rosebud or flower. 
Now this part you're going to want to hold with your left hand. And then right after this uh, last edge of the, the part that you rolled earlier, just pinch it about a half inch away from the rose. And that way when you go to twist this part, it'll push inwards like such. So then grab it with your left hand and see now you can see that it's starting to fold inwards. And then this part, if it's all unwoven or unrolled like that, just go in and with your hand and twist it a little so that. Now you're going to want to twist this way. So if you're looking at it, it'll be counterclockwise from right to left. So holding right under the flower itself with your left hand, just twist about an inch and a half, and then stop. Now to get the rose uh, or the flower's little leaf here, what you'll need to do is on the end, open it up a little, the napkin should hold if you've twisted it tight, and rip off a square. It doesn't have to be perfect. See, like mine's not a perfect square, but that's fine because what you're going to do is fold this into a triangular shape <clears throat> using the cut edges. So the edges that were uh, originally cut on the napkin, not the part you tore, you're going to take those and line them up like such. So this corner is going to go over here. Paying particular attention to making the um, these two edges line up and then have a triangle here. This will be your triangle. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it to line up as best as possible. So there. And don't worry about creasing this part. Try not to crease anything because you want it to be, you want them not to look folded as much. And so this extra part, I like to hide by do, by folding it back onto itself once. And this part you can crease. And then after I fold it once, I'll go ahead and fold it again so that this becomes the point. And this, this edge and this edge line up like such. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it's just to hide that rough edge. And then I have an extra piece there so I can Fold it inwards just a little to hide it. There you go. Perfect. Happy trees. So then, so this point will be what is twisted into the, the stem of the flower. And this part will be the leaf, like such. So now what you do is after you've twisted about maybe an inch, inch and a half, of the flower, you're going to want to open it up a little bit. This outer edge where you removed this piece of material from and then just tuck it in there as such. Maybe about an inch of the paper. And the only thing you really have to worry about is to make sure that the top of the leaf is up. And then just go ahead and use your hand to crumple this down and then start twisting again. And then once you get the leaf secured, what I like to do is with my left hand holding the top and my right hand holding the bottom, just twist it some more to tighten it. And it'll bind onto itself. And it's okay, see how the leaf is bending downwards? That's okay, don't worry about it yet. So now that I've got that secure, all I do now is grabbing the rest of the material in my hand using my left hand's index and middle or uh, index and thumb I continue to twist and just pulling the rows out of my hand as I twist you get a good uh, tight twist and when I get to the end I just use my right hand to um, twist the, the uh, napkin. And so it's basically done, but what then I like to do to make sure that it doesn't unravel is I grab the top again and the bottom and I just twist. 
real tight. There you go. Now to finish it, all I do is take my index finger, place it in the leaf, puff it open a little, and then pinch this bottom part so that it stays open. And there you go. And that's how you make a paper rose. Pretty easy. So I got two now. This is fun to do if you're waiting for your food and you have extra napkins on the table because they always throw them away once you leave because they don't reuse them. The next thing I want to show you is if you go to an Asian restaurant, particularly Chinese or Korean or Japanese, maybe even some Vietnamese restaurants, but they like to use plastic chopsticks it seems, is the chopstick stand. I learned this from a Korean friend of mine who learned it from a Japanese friend of mine who said he learned it when he went to China. I know that's, uh, that's a pretty uh, crazy way to learn something. But anyways, this is fairly easy to make too. Uh, I guess this falls under the origami um, category. But uh, basically it's, it's a folded piece of paper which acts as your chopstick stand and um, it resembles the chopstick rests that they make out of like porcelain or wood or bamboo metal sometimes. But anyway, this is really easy to make. When you go to a lot of Asian restaurants, they give you wooden chopsticks or bamboo chopsticks in a paper wrapper. When you take them out, people just normally throw these away. But my friend showed me something to do that was quite easy and passes the time while you're waiting for food. Is basically you take the wrapper and if you want to incorporate the picture on one side, because generally chopstick wrappers have a picture on one side with some sort of like Chinese writing or picture or whatnot. So you flip that side down. And then you fold the two ends inwards by thirds. So I'll just estimate, it doesn't have to be perfect. And when I'm doing this, I don't uh, line up the last one with the edge like this. I back it in a little, about maybe a quarter of an inch. And then I crease this edge, crease it real well. Then I crease this edge. And now um, I'm going to fold this corner this way. So I'm going to fold it this way. And when I do this, I'm going to make a triangle shape like such. You see that? I don't know if you can see that real well, but I'll pick it up and show you. And so we're, everything we do on this side, we're going to do on this side. So you'll, you'll see the steps again. Now what I like to do is only crease halfway, so I'm going to find the approximate halfway point, and then I'm going to crease outwards. Now I'm going to open it back up, and I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. I'm going to bend this corner over, and then I'm going to make a triangular shape like this. And then I'm going to find the halfway point, which is somewhere around here. And I'm going to crease outwards towards the point. I'm not going to crease this end. And you'll see why in a second. Now, we're done with this side. But what I want to show you is how we get the two edges. So I'm going to bring this guy back over here. So you see how we got this, this side of the chopstick stand? What you do is you take these two points and bend them towards each other. It might not work out right the first time, but give it a few tries. And then just pinch this inner edge, this fold right here. So I'm gonna pinch that, and then we're done. Don't worry about the side anymore. So with the picture side down again, what you're gonna wanna do is take this side bend it over and make another triangle and with this extra piece of paper here this extra edge it might make it difficult to bend but so just take your finger and work it out along and then creasing from the halfway point to the ed point to the uh, outer point and then open it back up and do the same thing, taking this corner and making a triangle on the opposite side, like so. And then creasing from the halfway, halfway point, like so.
so and then taking these two points and bringing them together like this now that's what you have so far so what you do now is you might notice that there's a point forming here what I do is grab these two coordinates and pull outwards slightly and then in the middle while holding these two points I press downwards then just kind of like crease them as much as you can or well yeah crease them I guess is the term and there you have it your own chopstick stand to place your chopsticks on when you're not using them if you're not as creative or you can't figure it out you can always rest your chopsticks on the edge of your dish Oop. but these are just a couple things you can do in your spare time if you're at a restaurant or whatnot it's a great uh, little trick to do if you're bored impress the ladies although I think ladies like little roses Although I know some women don't like roses, so maybe you can tell them it's a tulip or some random species of flower that that particular lady or gentleman happens to like. So these are the little things that I have covered in the video, the spirally napkin trick. Or the, um, paper flowers or the chopstick stands cha cha if you have any questions just post something in the comments and uh, I will answer them to the best of my ability hopefully I was clear enough to um, explain these little things and you find something useful out of this video thanks